of all time. Tony Romo after December 1st. Tony Romo, top 10, meltdown. Yeah, he stunk it up at the end of the season. In the Cowboys' final game of 2008, Tony Romo delivered an oh no. They bury him again! It was the third straight year he ended the season by melting down. He loves it. It's a pop fly. This is Tony Romo. After December 1st, Romo is just 5 and 10 as a starter. And the playoff drought will continue. At the end of the season, he is far from at his best. Tony Romo, in every other game, has it together, but take him to the postseason, and it's Meltdown City. A season is down to one play. They got a go to the end zone. Fourth and 11 at the Giants 23. He's got a little Brett Favre in him. He's a little bit of a gambler. And when you do that, you're going to have some great plays. You are going to have some spectacularly bad ones. Romo back to throw. Has time to the end zone. Intercepted by the Giants. This is a disappointment of absolutely colossal proportions. Wake me up when he wins a playoff game. The Dallas Cowboys are looking for their first postseason win since 1996. You talk about weird endings. Games don't end that way. There's the snap. The spot. Romo can't get the spot down. That Seattle game, what people don't remember is Tony Romo plays a pretty good game playing his first playoff game. Of course, now it's his legacy. I think it's incredibly unfair. If Martin Gramatica even gets a shoulder on the guy uh, who's running at Romo, Romo walks into the end zone. Did he make a bad play? Yes. Could he even score it on the play? Yes. Your starting quarterback shouldn't be holding your snap to begin with in a playoff game. It's an extra point, for heaven's sakes. Come on! I've never seen an ending to a game like that. What has Tony Romo done to become a media darling? Okay, the snap goes over his head. He runs for a first down against St. Louis. And the Tony Romo gets away from one man. Left to the 40, to the 50, first down! Great play. Oh, my goodness. Tony Romo, one of the great starting quarterbacks in the league. When you quarterback the Cowboys and Jessica Simpson's your girlfriend, you know what? Some people are going to hate you. You know, I would hate Romo, but he's not hateable. Isn't it interesting? He's not a hateable guy. I actually like Tony Romo. It's kind of odd. I, I, I kind of like his story. Undrafted, rising to the top. The guy has achieved the American dream in my eyes. I mean, he's a scratch golfer, which is just cool. He's dated Carrie Underwood, Jessica Simpson, and he's the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. So is he melting down? Maybe. Maybe he hasn't won a playoff game yet, but would you trade spots with him? Probably you would. I don't think it's fair to label him a choke artist yet. Too many guys have had problems in the playoffs early in their career only to rebound and do something great. All it takes is one, and people will forget about the botched snap, the interception at the end of the Giants game. Well, we got high hopes. I think it's early to put Romo in that top 10. The seven NFC Championship game, Favre's team died by him again, as he became the only quarterback ever to throw an overtime interception in two playoff games. Corey Webster got the pick. The Giants thought in that game that if you gave him enough time, there would be a moment where they could step in front of one in a key spot. It's unfortunate that that was his last throw as a Packer. Brett didn't get enough on that ball to get it over him. I gotta believe the 2007 championship game is gonna make him ill for decades to come. He made more stupid plays, more bonehead plays than any great quarterback that I have ever seen in my life. He's not the NFL's all-time interception leader for nothing. Far drills the right side of the ball, tipped and intercepted. Yet another interception. As a person who loved watching Brett Favre play, you can almost hold none of it against him. The meltdowns are going to come with success. You can't separate the two. What a throw by Brett Favre. Brett Favre made a lot more of those throws successfully than he missed, which is why he's a great quarterback. So many people related to the way Brett Favre played. He probably got a little bit more of a benefit of doubt than he should have. Oh, you talk about improvisation! If it was a young quarterback doing the kind of things that Brett has done over the last five or six years, people would be killing him. But because he's the anointed Brett Favre, everybody looks the other way. Let's get, let's get real here.